Hey guys, today we are going to be describing trends in the line graph. Yeah, in this lesson, I'm going to be teaching you um, how a line moves in the graph. <clears throat> and I'm going to be giving you a couple of alternative descriptions using different verbs, nouns, adjectives, uh, and, and adverbials that will definitely help you on your IELTS graph writings. It is indeed inevitable to understand how a line moves in a graph. So the movement of a line is called a trend. So here we have almost all um, useful vocabulary for you to write your IELTS task 1 line graph. So I will explain each word and each phrases to you in detail so that you understand how and when we have to use these things. So here I drew a sample line graph for you. It's just one line and it's a graph. And it's about proportion of population aged 65 and over. So this is not a question. I will show you the exact question in the middle of the lesson. But now it's just a graph and uh, so I can explain it to you using our vocabulary for line graph. <coughs> So the movement of a line, as I said before, is called a trend. So to get a good band score, you must show the examiner a range of different words to show upward or downward trends as well as key features. So obviously it is an upward trend, it's a downward trend. And it is an upward trend, it is a downward trend. So there are three type of, generally there are three types of movement in uh, a line graph so obviously on the line so there 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 may be uh, an upward trend just like this line there may be a downward trend just like this line an upward trend and there may be steadiness so steadiness, steadiness means that uh, a line doesn't change or doesn't show any change over a period of time so as I said before, by the way, this is the second part of line graph video. And um, as I said before, a line graph uh, may consist not only one line, but two, three lines in comparison between some units or countries or years, doesn't matter. But um, we are going to learn the movements in the line graph, which means trends. Uh, on one line. So listen to this carefully and try to understand vocabulary and uh, the tips that I'm going to use for you. Here we have, as we you may know, here we have a line graph and this one is a horizontal axis and this one is a vertical axis. So on the horizontal axis, generally there are years um, that are presented in the on the horizontal axis and on the well, vertical axis, there are some units, maybe percentages, maybe tons, kilograms, or whatever the unit is. And uh, most mostly, um, they are comparing two or three things, I mean the same unit, um, according to some maybe countries or some um, other things. In, in our, okay, in our uh, sample, here we have the full question. I'm going to show you the full question now. I think we're going to talk about three countries of 60 years. So here um, is the exact question. So the graph below shows the proportion of the population aged 65 and over between 1940 and 19, uh, 2040 in three different countries. So we have USA, Sweden, and Japan. I made the I made the line by myself. It's not in the question, but Later, after we understand uh, the trends in the graph, we are going to come back to this question and check some possible answers for that question. Well, <clears throat> let's go back to the line. So here we have a simple line, which is enough for you to understand line movements. And down below we have uh, list, lists of verbs, adverbs, and adjectives, and all other words that can be used for to describe the line movement. And uh, so a line in the graph, as I said before, either moves upwards, downwards, 
or doesn't show any change, which means remain steady. So, and you should know a um, wide range of vocabulary to um, define the movement of your line uh, in the graph. So let's check out some, start with the upward trend. There are some verbs, nouns, adverbials, and adjectives that we can use with a line graph in order to describe the movement of a line. But mainly, what, what mostly important is a verb and a noun uh, that can be described for um, a downward or upward, upward trend. So let's start with, with the words one by one. Here we have a couple words so that we can use them for an upward trend and couple words for uh, as nouns again for upward trend. If you look at this graph and if you look at this line you can see that there are only two movements. So we have upward trend, downward trend and upward trend. There's no steady movement in this line. So I made this line by myself using these digits and uh, units. So here we have the percentages 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. And here we have the years between 1940 and 2040. And as you can see, there is a change in the, um, in, for every year, for each year shown on the graph. So 1940 is 5%, 1960 is 10%. It's about proportion of population aged 65 and over which means the proportion was 5% uh, in 94 and 10% in 1960 and 15 over 15% 15 in 1980 and less than a little less than 15% in 2000 and almost 40% um, less than 15,000 in 2020 and 2040 it's 20 approximately 24%. So we have different numbers and different movements on the graph. So the movements actually um, demonstrate different numbers in, in, the, uh, in the graph, I mean, uh, as a line. So we can change, I can change the percentages here and I will show you what is a big change or big increase or um, a little decrease or big decrease. So these words are mainly useful for this purpose. So let's start with a rise. <clears throat> here we have a couple words to demonstrate upward trend. So if you check other uh, material, the first material that I sent you, there you can find the exact definition of the word, but I'm gonna tell you what is the definition of the word, along with describing how it um, shows the movement in the graph. So starting with the word rise and increase are the same words, which means rise means increase in number, amount or value here we have another you can, you can you can have anything here amount value or percentage or whatever it is and basically rise shows that and rise um, we can use rise for all kind of uh, increase and this is rise and if I change 1960 to 15 percent not 10 percent okay then I'll have rise again. If I change it about 25%, the, the line will go up here and joins to this in 1960. That's also going to be a rise. So rise is an, an increase is common word, two common words for line movement. You can use them for all kind of sharp or um, uh, little movements on the graph. So I'm going to put it back, make it 15%, uh, 10%. All right, now it's back. So um, also, for example, maybe let's say that these are about sales. And if we, we give one example to this, we can say that sales, for example, rose by 5% over um, 20 years. Here, sales rose by 5% over 20 years, which means from 1940 and 1960, there, there is a 5% of rise. Increase is the same thing. For example, uh, the population increased, uh, the proportion increased dramatically. It's not a dramatic increase. It's like gradually increased in the first um, half of the century, which means actually it's a little over half of the century because it's 1960. It means 20th century. 
here is we are all about 20th century till 2000 and over 2000 is 21st so <clears throat> you can use increase rise for the same purpose and grow is also another word that is a synonym of rise you can also use grow for example sales of new um, uh, cars grew by 10 percent last year so also we can use the adverb uh, preposition by after these verbs to show the exact uh, or around uh, number that that it made the increase so the next word is go up um, go up is same with rise so this rise increase grow go up also actually these all words are the synonyms uh, synonyms but the only uh, uh, difference is some of them um, uh, some of them mean that there is a sharp rise or drastically rise or any number you can hit. So instead of using any adverbial, you can just use these kind of words. Now I'm going to tell you what, what are really, uh, what are exactly those verbs. So climb is the next word for that. Climb means an increase in number um, or amount or level. So you can use climb instead of rise as well. So <clears throat> actually, so uh, climb, rise, increase, and grow and go up. Mostly used for percentages and um, any unit like tons or kilograms. Okay, climb is about uh, some units such as age and I don't know uh, the number of dead people or number of um, people who were born. Mostly we can use climb for that matter. But you can use climb in this case as well. So for that drastic increase or sharp increase, we have a couple of words like rocket, shoot, or skyrocket. If I improve this line over 30% from 1940 to 1960, uh, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to make this 30%. Oh, sorry. And see, there is a sharp increase, which means if we um, if if we um, define it as a verb, then we're going to use should rocket or skyrocket. So here the proportion of population skyrocketed up to 30% uh, from 1940 to 1960. So in 1960 is 30%. It's called skyrocketed. You can use shoot and the past form is shot and you can use um, a rocket as well. Soar is also used for this um, sharp increase. So I'm going to put it back to 10% again. <clears throat> So 5% is not a big deal. So if if your line and if the unit and uh, that the line describes uh, goes up to um, goes by 5% up, up by 5%, then it's not a big increase. So you don't need to use any of these words, but you can just say rise, increase, grow, improve by, jump, uh, uh, move upward. So go up is the same with rise as I said before. And climb is also the increase in rise amount or level. So rocket also has another version rocket up. You can use with the preposition. It also means um, if any price or amount rockets, it means it increases quickly and suddenly. So there can there there must be a sudden movement as well for you to use rocket or rocket up or sky rocket. So let's say the movement is. Incre uh, gradually increasing over this uh, 40 years, I think, yeah. And let's make 2025. So in 2000, the proportion goes up to 25%. Here, we have a gradual increase. So rocket means um, sudden increase. So for the gradual increase, you can use the, uh, the rest of the words instead of this. Okay, so I'm putting it back. 14. Well, and next word is soar. Soar, as I said before, is a synonym with rocket or skyrocket. It means uh, to increase quickly to a high level. And um, if actually the plummet is the opposition of this word, plummet means increase sharply to a, a decrease sharply to a lower level. So um, a plummet is here. We're going to be talking about it. So the, the opposition word for leap is 
um, or, or soar is plummet. So the next word is improved by. Improved by is the same word just like rise or increase. You can use it instead of them as well. And if you see them, you know that this definitely means the same with rise or increase. And um, so we have jump and leap. It is also defines a quick increase. I mean something uh, that increases quickly by a large amount. And and a position of the, of this word is tumble. So it's also here. I'm going to be talking about this. And um, that's it. That's all the words that you can use easily for um, you know, describing uh, an upward trend in your line graph. But as I said before, instead of using verbs, it's better to use noun phrases for academic purposes because noun phrases may bring you more score than um, than a verb phrases. I mean, we'll obviously build a better sentence, a more academic sentence than a verb can do. But you can use both. It doesn't matter that much. But if you want to be a little different uh, in your sentences, then better to use noun phrase. So we have also upward trend nouns here, as you can see. So the words that can be used with these nouns are general. So with these nouns, you can use experience. And actually, I have the list in the other um, uh, PDF file. You can just use that too. But you can just say experience, arise, uh, show, an increase, a climb, a growth, there's almost the same words, but let me just tell you what are what exactly are these uh, words meaning. So I'm going to decrease it. I think my phrase is not there yet. Here we go. Yeah. So let's now check out the definitions of the nouns for upward um, trend. I'm not going to tell this about the same words because you know already, already you know a rise, increase, and climb, and 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 uh, leap, jump, because these are the same with their verb uh, version. So it means the same. It's just a noun. We're going to put a, a or an art article in front of them. Uh, but for example, a growth is a noun for the uh, the word grow. You already know that. And um, a growth means an increase in number, amount, or size, just like row, but it's, it's just a noun. So you have to put another word in front of these nouns to uh, present your idea, to show your idea. And um, we also have the, the noun called an uplift. An uplift is an increase in something, as usual. And these are all the synonyms, and you can use all of them uh, for all for an, an, an upward trend if you want to um, describe your ideas using noun phrases. And there's also a noun called an upsurge. Upsurge is a sudden increase, just like rocket up, rocket and skyrocket. If you want to use a noun form of these words, the definition of these words, then as a noun, you can just use an upsurge. And a leap is also a large increase and a change. So a large increase it's not a large increase, but if it goes up to 25 or 27% in, in, in over this period of time, it's a large increase. And uh, you can just use these words. Um, upsurge or leap. Jump is also the same with leap. An improvement. This is an improvement. This line, this growth is an imp improvement. For the percentages, the growth is a good word instead of improvement and as well as increase and rise. Well, um, next step is downward trends. So upward trends, we already know that upward trends are um, are used for to describe how a line move upwards. Now downward trend, we also have verbs and nouns for them. And uh, these are almost the same with each other. Uh, no big difference, but if there's a sharp decrease, then you may have to use some better words for um, your graph move, uh, line movement. So for the f first verb is full. Full means to go down, as, as you can see in, in this part of the uh, line. So there is a fall in the movement of line. So fall is to fall. 
and also a noun form is full. You can also say free full for a noun form, I'll tell you here. So a verb full means to go down to a lower level, amount, price, etc. Especially a much lower one. I mean, there is a full here, and if it, if it continues, there's another full here, but if it sharply folds, then we have some better other better options for that, like plummet, plunge. But fall is a fall, you can use it just like increase and rise for upward trend. Fall and decrease are two general words and two common word verbs um, to um, describe your downward trend. And decline is decrease in quantity. Decline is also decrease. So we have plummet. Plummet is a sudden movement. So plummet means to suddenly and quickly decrease in value or amount. So if I um, if I if I if I change 2000 and 1980 to um, not 2000 actually to not 13 but six percent, there's gonna be there's gonna be a plummet. So the line movement, the proportion of the people over 65 year, uh, 65 and over. So the number plummeted. So which means that it uh, uh, suddenly and quickly decreased in value. And uh, as an example, you can say, for example, in 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 actual PDF five, you have some examples. Uh, profits plummeted from. 10,000 10, million to uh, 100 uh, to um, uh, 5,000 million. So all those prices have plummeted down. You can use it for all kinds of purposes if there's a big sudden uh, decrease. And uh, we have the next word is plunge. Plunge means to suddenly and quickly decrease. It's almost the same word with plummet. Okay, you have drop. Drop um, also means to fall or to fall a lower uh, level or amount, especially a much low level amount so free fall is the same like drop fall and drop almost the same words reduce is the same word with decline or decrease a reduce how is, is also a transitive verb and intransitive verb as an intransitive verb it's a synonym of decrease and um, well reduce Again, to make something uh, smaller or less size or amount you can use that we have collapse next word is Collapse. Collapse means if um, prices, percentages, or levels collapse, they suddenly become much lower. This is also a, a good explanation for a, a good um, alternative to uh, uh, demonstrate a fall in your line movement. And um, so the, uh, this word is also is the same with decrease and. Um, you can use it both. Dip if an amount. Here we go. Dip means if an amount or level dips, it becomes less usually for just for a for a short short period of time. So this is not a good line movement. I mean, this is not exactly dipping. So here we have if 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 it, if it would be like this, like coming here and going up from here, that's that may be a dip. Dip means a, a, a de de decline for a short period of time. But uh, in, in contrast, collapse means, uh, and also um, uh, drop or taken nazodive means go uh, increasing, uh, go um, much lower level. level. Um, so the next word is dive. Dive is almost the same word with um, increase. So as I said before, these are all synonyms. You can use all of it. It's better not to use the same word for many other sentences, but try to use different words if you are needed. Uh, if you need, if you need to use, so go down is a very common word. We're not going to be focusing on this. And these two words actually are very nice words. I mean, to use, it's different. It's not commonly seen in IELTS Task One um, sentences, but um, it's also a good way to describe, um, you know, a very fast and um, sudden decrease in your amount. So, and, and 
it's actually very large fall in the amount or value or price or condition of something. So the next word is slight. Slight we know as um, as a physical movement, but also slight means um, again prices, amounts, or uh, levels or rates. Uh, if they slide, they become smaller or lower, and it's also a synonym of drop. And going to free fall is also very fast and uncontrolled fall in the value of something. So this one, if this line goes down from this place between 2000, uh, around 2010, that must be uh, uh, um, go into a free fall. So free fall is very, very sharp and sudden decrease in the line or uh, for the amount of, for the amount or level or price. And as upward trend nouns, downward trend also has its own um, vocabulary for uh, as, as nouns. So it's almost the same, free fall, fall, decrease, a reduction, a downward trend, a, tendence, a downward tendency, a decline, a drop, slide, it's all the same. But slide is a, was a sharp, to slide was a sharp sudden uh, decrease in, in the amount, which means that we're going to use noun form also for the same purpose. And um, well, here we have, it's better to learn them all and just by heart and because it's going to be very, very easy for you to write if, if you learn by heart and learn them uh, correctly. You, again, you can find the exact definitions of this of these words and, and, and nouns in the PDF file that I sent to you. Adverbials are very important um, for IELTS writing task one, all of the all, all sort of questions, uh, and mostly in the line graph. So um, we have a couple um, different ad adverbials that we can use to describe a, a movement uh, on a line. So again, we we have um, at the definition of the word of these um, adverbs in the in the PDF file. So if you feel like checking it out, just do it. And um, so I also written here um, what exactly this words means and, and, and how, how what kind of movement uh, let us use this uh, adverbials. And uh, dramatically, start with the dramatically, dram dramatically in a great and sudden way. So you can just say, instead of saying rock it up, you can just say rise or rose dramatically rock it up and rose dramatically. It's, it's like using adverbials um, uh, is like uh, giving the definition of a verb. And it's also help you to incre increase the amount of words that you use for your task one. So I instead of saying uh, rock it up, you can just say increase dramatically. Um, and, and we have the word rapidly. This is a dramatic increase. This is not a dramatic increase. So this is um, speedily increase, maybe swiftly increase, but not dramatic increase. So we have the word adverb uh, rapidly. Rapidly means very quickly in a very short time. It's not a short time. Short time is this. This is rapidly. So here you can just use um, a quickly, swiftly, significantly. You can use considerably. You can use. And uh, we have sharply. Sharply also means the suddenly and by a large amount. This. For example, from 1940 to 1960, this line um, uh, sharply increased. I mean, the the, uh, the proportion sharp, sharply increased, which means that um, there is a big, large amount of increase happened uh, for, for this um, for, for almost 40 years. And then we have the word hurriedly means quickly, speedily means quickly, swiftly means quickly significantly and considerably and also substantially this movements can be described like that noticeably also this four of them belong to the gradual movement also instead of using adverbials you can just use um, you can just use um, an adjective with a noun it's also possible possible for example dramatic instead of saying increase dramatically or rose dramatically you can just say um, show a dramatic 
or experience a dramatic increase or rise. So this is also a very nice way to put uh, your to to um, show how a line movement how a line moves. So it's also a more academic way. Um, experience a dramatic. Uh, increase or rapid increase or sharp steep quick hurried speedy these are the same with this adverbials almost the same translation and the meaning it's just these are adjectives using with uh, nouns and uh, adverbials using with adverbials are used with uh, verbs also um, you can check out the definition of these verbs uh, of these adjectives in the PDF file and for adverbials and adjectives there are rapid change, moderate change, steady change, and slight change. So moderately, gradually, progressively, this uh, line movement here between 1940 and 1980 uh, is an exact uh, um, example of this four adverbials and four adjectives. So you can just say rose moderately or gradually or progressively also use an adjective form you can just say experience a moderate or gradual or progressive um, increase or rise in the movement but if I if I change this 1960 to um, 5% here we have 5% then the line is going to be almost the same so it's going to be a steady movement for this matter, we can just we can use for this um, uh, for this flow of a line, we can just use some verbs and some adjectives and some adverbs to describe this kind of movement. For example, so between 1940 and 1960, the movement so um, the movement remained steady. So in your example, your movement is the proportion of population, and you can just describe it. Uh, with uh, by a, by a sentence in a paraphrased form, but I'm just giving you a sample word subject, just like movement. The movement remains steady, or proportion of the people, or over uh, 65 remains steady. You can just say that the proportion remains steady, remain constant, remain the same, remain stable, remain static, unchanged. You can just say level out, leveled out. It's almost the same. Re remains in level out is the same. Prevail consistency. Reached plateau, state uniform, state immutable. You can just use all of these for uh, a steady a movement. It also has its own adverbs and adjectives. You can just say, um, you can just say steadily or ceaselessly in order, uh, if you want to use an adverbial in your sentence. But using adverbials are not. Uh, that using adverbials is not recommended all the time for especially for uh, if there is a steady movement because you may not just find the the verb uh, to um, put in front of that adverbial uh, to uh, to um, kind of show that it's a steady movement or steady chain. <clears throat> So um, also, also we have some adjectives like steady and ceaseless, and uh, you can use it as with a noun, okay? And it has also its noun forms here, yeah. Um, so you can just say the proportion uh, shows a steadiness or uh, experience the plateau or stability or static. You can just use a noun form as well, depending on your... Um, on your, um, your idea. So uh, I will send you a couple other samples of di from different questions like how experts and other students um, write their task one, which uh, kind of vocabulary they use or how they use. You can just read them and also understand that uh, and feel confident about writing your task one answer. Well, um, check out these verbs and um, study these verbs on the graph and um, I will ask you to uh, make a line, just this, this kind of graph showing me the movements, how which movement belo belong to, uh, which mo movement describes which word. So you just, you just have to tell me that. So please learn this all and use this in your uh, task one. These words, this vocabulary, um, 
is not only about uh, line graph, but you can just use them for pie chart and bar chart because it's, it's also the same. It's about numbers, levels, and proportion, portion, and slices. So you can just use these words for almost anywhere in uh, IELTS, IELTS task one. Um, you may have some rapid ups and downs in your, uh, it's called fluctuations. So if you have ups and downs, these ups and downs are fluctuations, which, which means uh, you may have a rapid, which means a, uh, um, a, a speedy uh, ups and downs in your graph. And for that, you have, these are not a rapid ups, there's no rapid ups and downs in this graph. Rapid ups and downs, it looks like a heart rate, like this, like this. This is rapid ups and downs. This is called uh, fluctuations. So there are some particular verbs for that matter. You can just say a wave, just like a C wave, fluctuate, and uh, oscillate, palpitate, and all these verbs you can use for that movement of a line. And also non forms, which fluctuations are very popular in, uh, in IELTS. And, um, and for the rest, for, uh, uh, the rest four samples that are also a great way to um, describe rapid ups and downs in the graph. Okay, this is. I think this is all about movement. Uh, this vocabulary is pretty enough uh, to use in your line graph. You just have to look carefully in the line and, and try to describe all the movement you can see uh, from your own point of view. And it doesn't happen only in one day. You have to just practice and write five or ten, maybe fifteen um, uh, line graph answers just to understand how it goes and. And please remember that you have only 20, day, 20 minutes to uh, complete your answer in the IELTS Task 1 essay. From that on, we have dates, months, and years. And uh, check these things out too. For example, if you want to say uh, something between 1990 and 1920, you can just say start starting from 1940 to 1960 or starting from 2000 to 2040 or commencing you can use another alternative of start from 2000 to 2040 and um, or if it's between you can just say between 1995 or 2005 if it's in the middle of between I mean from 1995 and 2005 you have a couple of ways or, or you can just say after 1995 or by 1995 means until that very year. In 1998 was within that year. It's not before, it's not after. Uh, so check check out this um, um, prepositions as well for uh, months we, can, we use in, for days we use on. You already know that. And you can just use it during the period, during 2011, during 2011 or during uh, this decade between 1940 and 1950, which means it includes the years between 1940 and 1950. This year, so you're going to be describing. Uh, also, we have, as I said before, there are 0, 25, 50, 45, and 60 are very important uh, in IELTS. So IELTS task one. So you know that 15s and 15 and 45 are quarters, and 60. Uh, I mean, uh, 30 is half. Uh, 50 is half, and uh, it's better you know this. So you can use it for the for the period of times, and you can just use it for the slices of a pie chart or um, bar chart. And um, so the last quarter of the year, which means the uh, so there are twelve uh, months in a year, which means that you there are, if you divide it into two uh, 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 four, I mean there are twelve months, and you divide it by four, it is. Uh, it means that first three, uh, first four months divided by three first four months of the first quarter, or the, or the first um, three months of the first quarter, and the last quarter is the uh, from um, uh, nine to twelve. And um, you can say you can just say if you want to use the particular year, you can just say in the eighties or in nineteen in the nineteen eighties. Try not to miss the article and try to use the correct preposition. It's very important. It's very very important. Okay, check these things out and please also uh, learn them. And next time, if you want to use, if you still don't remember, just go back and read it again multiple times and work on that. So for percentages, we have a couple other vocabulary. Like uh, if you say 
it, so for example, if let's say that the percentage increased from five to uh, fifteen, which means it doubled. If five to twenty, which means it's uh, triple. Uh, and you can also say fall or treble, or you can just say it's three times higher, five times low, lower, or you can just say declined or or increased to about uh, whatever the percentage is. In our case, it's fifteen per, uh, per, uh, percent. And you can just say stood exactly, exactly at 43. So in the line graph, so you can see some percentages here. As you can see here, it's not 15 or 20. It's between 15 or 20. And it's very near to the half of this uh, to um, uh, unit. So it is a little over than um, 17, or you can just say it's a little over than 17, 15, uh, so here 20 and seven, uh, 15, they're like 70 is in the middle, right? 17.5, you can just say it's a little over than 17. Uh, also, that those kind of a little over phrases are here, exactly a half, it's not exactly a half, it's just above the half, here you have just above the half, or just under the half, just over a half, you can just say. And um, for for this percentages, I mean, check check this out because you're going to be knitting here. And uh, here in this case, we have zero to thirty percent, and it's called fractions. So the fractions ha you can describe fractions using phrases. So in this, in our case, it's zero to thirty percent, which means two three percent is a very tiny fraction, and uh, ten to fifteen percent is almost uh, a quarter. Okay, I mean, it takes uh, here, uh, it is written by, um, it, it is written according to uh, the whole amount of the percentage, which means 100%. But in this example, in our example, you can use those, um, you know, these words according to 0 to 30 increase. So if it's like 15, it's almost almost exactly a half in, in 30%, 0% to 30%. This is our whole unit, and and the and the and, and the half of it is fifteen percent. So if your unit is is at exactly fifteen percent, you can just say it's exactly a half. If it's around, you can just you can just say it's nearly a half. So check out these words as well. We have proportions. Whatever your amount is, if it's very very small, like two, three percent, five percent, depending on your. Uh, percentages, then you can just say a tiny proportion or very small proportion. If it's like 4%, 5%, 6%, you can just say an ins insignificant minority or proportion. Just like that. And if it's if it's bigger than that, if it's more than 50%, and you can just say it's a large proportion or significant majority or proportion or a very large proportion. So we also have the fa fa phrases of approximation, just like I said before. Um, you can just say just over, which means if it's 17.5, if it's a little over than 17.5, between 0 to 30, it is just above or just uh, over 17%. Under is little, uh, just means a little uh, over, a little above your uh, unit. Almost roughly, you already know these things, I don't, I don't, I don't even need to tell you. Well, uh, study this vocabulary, and for the next two, I will send you two line graphs uh, question. So try to write them. Here we have uh, a sample answer, two sample answers for this question. The proportion of population aged 65 years and over. I will send you this, also read this. And here the introduct, I mean the structure of the, um, uh, there is a, uh, introduction and over over overview uh, paragraph. Also, there's features. There are features. So check out these features and check out these verbs and um, adverbials that are used in this um, um, in this uh, uh, very two examples. So also highlight them. For example, reached up to fifteen percent. Highlight reach up to and show me that. So in the next video, show me what kind of vocabulary they use and what else you could have used instead of these words. Find the words, adjective, adverbials, whatever I taught you today and highlight them like this, for example. So teacher, it, it, it is, um, I found one word reached up to. I could use grew up to. 
uh, instead of this. Or I could use a noun for it. I could just say experience a growth of 15% in the year of 2000. And also, instead of in the year of 2000, show me something else. Do you understand? You kind of paraphrase, but use the synonyms. Don't change the definition or meaning. Or um, just use the synonyms for the this kind of uh, verbs, adjectives, or nouns, and send send it back to me. That and and also in in the brackets, show me that what else you could write, just like this. Okay, teacher reached up to is uh, one example, and here in the bracket, I could just say brew uh, up to or or something else or increased uh, up to. So yeah, just show me. And if there are two of uh, reached up or two of grew up to, just use something different. Okay, for example, here is nearly 25, so you can just say nearly a quarter. Okay, and, and just show me what you learned from today's lesson and on this two um, sample answers. Well, I guess it's enough for, for this. Watch it again uh, a couple times and try to understand. It's not very hard, it's very easy, you just have to learn the vocabulary and see it exactly on the graph, on the line. And next time if you see the line movement, all you have to do, first you have to define how a line moves. For example, in this, um, in this word file here, in this graph there are three different countries, which means there are three different lines. So. Uh, the, the actually in the in, in, in the line graph what 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 they ask from us just to uh, define uh, the line movements these three line movements and compare them with each other so comparing is absolutely on you but defining you can just find it uh, you can just see it for the first time and try to uh, define how the movement uh, goes up and down up and down and then you have to compare with each other according to the um, uh, structure of task one. All right, so have fun, watch this, and if you have any question, write it down, make a video, or just mail it to me.